I don't know what to do. Hell. I don't even know how to explain this. I can't go to the police and I'm pretty sure no one else will believe me. Maybe you won't too, but I need to take it off my chest. A girl had been following me around. I'm a pretty common guy. Brown eyes, brown hair, average size, not super strong. Working a pretty common office job. There is nothing special about me. Whenever a beautiful woman stares at me, I think I have something weird on my face. All my relationships so far have been with normal looking girls. You know, girls on my league. So the first weird thing was that this girl was stunning and way too young for me. She looked like Chloe Grace Moretz or a younger Jenna Atkins, my eternal high school platonic crush. She was everywhere I was. I went to my usual coffee shop and she was waiting tables there. It's a really small place and the only waiter was an older woman that had been there forever, but I didn't overthink it. She stared at me too much, it was uncomfortable. I accidentally dropped my coffee mug and she seemed to be in complete panic and despair. Not the normal annoyed or jumpy look that the waitress would address you, because she has to clean up after you. Next, she was a voluntary nurse at my gym, just a few days later. She wore a whole different makeup and, I think, a wig. So this time I wasn't sure it was actually her. But her voice betrayed her disguise. That's when I started to get suspicious. She was there to raise awareness about the flu vaccine and even had a few shots for the ones interested. Vaccines are provided for free by the government in my country, but you usually have to wait on a long line. I felt wary and uneasy and ran away. To be honest, I don't know if by then I was more scared of her or of the needle. At this point it was really weird, but I was trying to rationalize it. After that she showed up at my door pretending to sell a newspaper subscription, but she was actually scanning the place to try to break in later. It became clear that she was after me, and I could almost smell the danger whenever I saw her. And it happened... a lot. She was always lurking around my neighborhood. It was nothing that I could call the cops for but my stomach dropped every time. The worst attempt was when she got herself tired as an intern in the office I work in. She poorly shoved me down the stairs, but her physical strength was so puny that I lost my balance for mere three steps and didn't even sprain my ankle, although it ached a little for two days. I wanted to scream at her and ask for answers, but as soon as I made sure I was alive and well, she was gone. Last night she broke into my house and stabbed me. Fortunately she missed my vital spots, merely sending a wave of pain through my left shoulder. The adrenaline immediately kicked in and we fought, rolling on the floor and clumsily trying to kick each other. It took me no more than two minutes to easily overpower her, blocking her movements with my body. The very blade she used to hurt me was now pressed against her throat. What do you want from me, girl? There was fear in her face. Not only the obvious fear from the situation she was in, but something ingrained, something rooted in her being. I pressed the knife further. I want you to make very clear what you have against me, kid. I am tired of you trying to kill me. Would you believe what I told you? She asked, her voice a little muffled. You have to try me on that. I am from the future, Matthew Hendrick. You are a fucking asshole there. The biggest one there is. 
I nervously laughed. If your crazy story was true, why the fuck they would send someone so weak to deal with me? There are no they, Matthew. It's over in my timeline. You became an infamous serial killer and your actions inspire others. Then the killing quickly gets political and you inspire war. I wanted to at least get rid of you in another future, even if I won't be there to enjoy it. I see red. You're a fucking liar. This is the worst story I ever heard. Tell me who the fuck hates my guts this much. And your guts too, because you can't expect to get me killed with this scrawny body of yours. I don't have anything else to add, Matthew. She retorts and tries to jump and get rid of my weight to free her arms. She is fast and graceful, I have to admit. But she lacks everything else. I squeeze her neck, hoping that she will finally tell me the truth, instead of coming up with ridiculous tales. I urge her to spill the beans while keeping the pressure, but she never says anything anymore. I didn't notice the moment her neck snapped. It was terrifying, but also thrilling. Inhaling air like my lungs will collapse if I don't. I let go of the girl's lifeless body and try to collect myself. After the excitement comes the fear. What have I done? Will more people come to murder me? Who even is she? Trying to find some clue. I check out her pockets and it's not hard to find some kind of ID. Probably from another country, because it looks weird. Her name is Lauren. I sigh. I killed someone and, on top of it, she has the same name as my deceased grandmother. I frantically run my eyes through the rest of the card. Date of birth, November 14, 2024. I am shaking. Her name is Lauren Atkins Hendrick. I killed my daughter. And I don't like how good I feel about it.